You can see them from space. They are an indispensable source of fresh water for millions. They are under threat, all that and more. But tonight, we'll finally have the conversation about the Great Lakes everyone was afraid to have. Which one is the greatest of all? Here to pitch, which is the greatest Great Lake? And we're going to go in order of size here, starting with, representing Lake Superior, the anonymous creator behind the Twitter parody account, at Lake Superior. He's somewhere, ironically enough, in Michigan. Representing Lake Huron, there's Megan Leslie, president and CEO of the World Wildlife Canada. Getting into the spirit of things here, she's in our studio representing uh, Lake Huron. Now representing Lake Michigan, Walter Senzik, mayor of St. Catharines, past chair of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. He's also in our studio. Representing Lake Ontario, Serene Fox, artist and activist. She's in Barrie, Ontario, also getting into the spirit of things. And representing Lake Erie, Tony Decker, lead songwriter and vocalist of the indie folk rock band Great Lake Swimmers, and he's in our studio too. And it's great to welcome our guests on the line and those of you representing three great, great lakes here in our studio. We're going to... Megan, we're not going to quite do this like back in your days when you were a member of parliament. We're not going to have I'm ready. very strict rules, but we're going to start with some opening statements here and we'll go in order of size. So Lake Superior, come on in here, get us started and tell us why your lake is the greatest great lake. It's in the name. I am Lake Superior as my infamous Twitter handle suggests. Lake Superior is the greatest of the lakes. It feeds the water for all other four, the four other Great Lakes and is large enough to contain all the water of the Great Lakes, including three extra Lake Eries. If that's not great, I don't know what is. Some strong points there, Megan Leslie. You're doing Lake Huron. That's the second biggest. What have you got to say? Well, it's hard to pick just one lake. So luckily with Lake Huron, you don't have to because it's two <laughs> lakes for the price of one. It is Lake Huron. It is also Georgian Bay. Mm. That is part of Lake Huron. So two different ecosystems, two different cultures, uh, two different experiences. Also some strong points there, Your Worship. What have you got to say? What I've got to say is that when you think of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, this is like Goldilocks and the Five Lakes. And when you look at the Five Lakes, I'm gonna take you through, over the course of the next half hour, I'm gonna take you through why Michigan is the perfect lake. Unlike Superior, which is too big and too cold. The other one is Lake Huron, <laughs> is too rocky. Lake Erie's too shallow. Lake Ontario, I'll get into why Lake Ontario is not <laughs> the top, but Michigan will be number one at the end. Like Goldilocks, just right. Just right. All right, gotcha. Serene Fox, come on in here. Lake Ontario is the best because? Well, it is small, but it is mighty. Lake Ontario is actually, you know, you called it out. You said Superior had in its name. But one of the traditional names for Lake Ontario is Nigani Gichigami, which means the leading sea, which quite frankly makes it the leader of all lakes. And if you follow my traditional migration story, you'll come to see just how important it is. So yeah, Lake Ontario has some of the most iconic coastlines in Ontario and Canada. So I'm looking forward to telling you just a little bit why Lake Ontario is absolutely the best lake. And we look forward to hearing it. Okay, Tony Decker, you're batting fifth in this lineup here today. Why is Lake Erie the best? Uh, Lake Erie is the best um, because uh, it's, you, it's comfortable to swim in uh, all summer long. Um, there's beautiful beaches. Uh, it has uh, 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 Point, Point Pelee and Pelee Island is a, is, a, is a through route for migratory birds, super important for, for, our, um, for our environment. Um, and uh, the Lake, lake Erie provides the lake effect that has, uh, creates the microclimates that's perfect for growing uh, fruits and vegetables and grapes in the Niagara region. So all of that stuff we enjoy from the Niagara region is a result of Lake Erie's uh, lake effect. I have to say, strong opening statements from everybody here. This may be more difficult to uh, judge than one had thought. So let's go around for a second round here. Okay, Lake Superior, come on in here. You gave us the opening statement. Let's dive in a little deeper now. You've heard some of the criticisms. Lake Superior is too big. It's too cold. What do you say to that? Too cold? There's no such thing as too cold. <laughs> There's just too weak. You know, there are... Part of Lake Superior's power are the intense conditions, the 30-foot waves, the um, blustery wa the blustery winds, and uh, the squalls. It is a beautiful uh, to experience that inclement weather. All right, Megan Leslie, you heard the criticism over here. Lake Huron, too rocky. Oh, come on. 
So we have Lake Huron, and when you go, you know, Sarnia to Tobermory, it's got these white sand beaches. They're beautiful, lots of swimming, big waves. And then you do have the rocky shores of Georgian Bay, those iconic images of that, that white pine blown and twisted in the wind. So it's, I think it's really exciting and dynamic that you get the best of all worlds with just this one lake. It's a very group of seven, isn't it? Isn't it? It really is. You look like you're looking at a painting when you're looking you at You walk through the Georgian Art Gallery Bay. of Ontario, and you're basically right there. Right on. Now, okay, Walter, I, I, I'm going to put this out here because I think maybe you have the toughest job of all the five representatives here. Because your Great Lake, is any of it in Canada at all? It's all American. It's got four states that touch Lake Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan. Mm -hmm. So it is an American lake. There's good Americans out there. <laughs> and this is the great American lake. Hmm. And when you think of Michigan, you think of freshwater surfing. It actually has the best waters to surf in freshwaters out of all the freshwaters in North America. If you've ever been to Sheboygan, you know that you can surf in the Great Lakes. This is Sheboygan, Wisconsin? Sheboygan, Wisconsin. You ever been there? I have not. And so Gus Polinski and the Kenosha Kickers, Home Alone, I've got the T-shirt. You've got the swag here. I got let's a limited see, what, edition. What is that? Which, let's, uh, this Sheldon, is... which camera? Camera three. Yeah, let's yeah, show it over there. It's right there. Now, Gus Polinski and the Kenosha Kickers, the best polka band ever, <laughs> according to John Candy. <laughs> and I will tell you that when you think of Michigan, the waters themselves, it's pristine. It is the longest lake from north to south. And it really is that quintessential American lake. It's not uh, bold and brash okay, like you think but I got Okay, but I got to follow up here. You do realize that you're on a Canadian television channel right now, and you do realize that you're the mayor of a Canadian city, and you're pitching a Great Lake that's all in the United States. But I was also the chair of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Well, that's true. With 150 mayors that all touch the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River Basin. So we've got to be binational in our thinking. And the Great Lakes, you look at it as a binational body of water. We all have to protect it on both sides. So you're looking for extra marks for being very ecumenical right now. I'm looking for a lot of Americans to tune into the show and get me some <laughs> okay. votes. That's what no, I'm looking for Okay, right no, now. we've got some Americans who watch. That's fine. Okay, okay. Let's go back to Lake Ontario. Now, um, Serena, talk to us about this. The, the, the history of Lake Ontario and the connection in particular that you have for it. Uh, expand on that if you would. Yeah, so I mentioned in my opening statement um, our migration story. So I grew up hearing our creation story, uh, and part of that talks about prophecies. Uh, and it talks about the migration. So my people, the Anishinaabe, all came from the East Coast, um, out from the Atlantic Ocean. And it talks about a story, a time uh, when our people moved uh, all across Canada. We actually ended up settling along. I'll give you a little shout out, Lake Superior, hmm. along the shores of Lake Superior, but really along all of the Great Lakes. And so when you're thinking about Lake Ontario, it has these thousands of islands, uh, almost just shy of 2,000 islands. And uh, in those islands, our creation story actually talks about um, the creators stepping across those islands as they created this migration path for us. So for me, as an Indigenous person, maybe outside of what we all know as the iconic landscape. Um, I actually have a history of my ancestors' footsteps along these shoreways. Um, and to me, that's really special. It holds my history. And uh, for all of us Canadians, it actually holds the history of who we are, um, how we settled, how we engaged in commerce. Um, so it starts with my creation story, but it's uh, become all of our story, uh, whether we know it yet or not. Hmm, very cool. All right, Tony, uh, speaking of history, you have personal mm -hmm. history with Lake Erie. You grew up on Lake Erie, yes? Yeah. Whereabouts? Uh, uh, yeah, I grew up in the in the, the small but mighty town of Waynefleet, Ontario. And where's that? Uh, that is, uh, let's see, uh, just uh, do kind of do south of, it's on the sort of the north the northeastern shore of Lake Erie. Northeastern, okay. Yeah. Uh, and was it, yeah. what was it like growing up on the lake? Well, it was, it kind of created the backdrop for, for our, our lives uh, in the summertime with the beaches and the swimming, um, but also um, uh, in the wintertime, uh, ice skating, uh, ice fishing. My brother and my dad and I would go out ice fishing every, most winters when I was, when I was younger. Um, and uh, it's now just, uh, I find it endlessly inspiring. It's inspired a lot of my music. Um, and uh, yeah, coming from a small rural town, um, it was, it really, 
was was created the backdrop for our lives growing up there. And what about the criticism that Lake Erie is too small, too warm to swim in, and too stinky with all that seaweed in there? Really? Well, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it it actually among the Great Lakes, um, it it it's it it. Uh, it, it, it sort of cleans itself the fastest because of its size. Um, so environmentally, the cleanup was was a lot faster, let's say, from, from the 70s till now. Um, and uh, it's kind of turned around the quickest, thankfully. So small, yeah. but mighty and manageable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. <laughs> let's go back to Lake Superior here. And I guess we should, uh, well, what should we say here? Lake Superior is sort of a, a, sat, a satirical Twitter account. 200,000 followers, which is not bad. Lots of sarcasm, lots of creativity on the account, uh, on the account rather. Lake Superior, how did that start and why is it floating your boat, so to speak? Well, the, the Twitter account's been around for about a decade and it does take on the voice of a very sassy, overly confident lake with a bit of a superiority complex. Uh, but that whole uh, voice is used to relay the, the message of a lot of Great Lakes scientists. Um, I'm not a scientist myself, but I love to relay their message um, from all the Great Lakes and their, their latest research. Um, so the, the comedy has been a great way to build the voice and to make it known that I am the greatest. <laughs> um, but it's all in the name of love for Great Lakes science. Well, I should follow up on that because the, the lake is not called the best. It's called superior, which is just sort of relative. Right? It's not superlative, it's just relative. Any problems with that? Well, I'd like to say, if, if you go to the account and look at the pinned tweet, um, without me, they would be called the Good Lakes. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's my presence that makes the lakes the Great Lakes. And I'd like to add, if I could go back to the earlier conversation, I'm the only Great Lake that has an entire national park inside of it being Isle Royal National Park. Okay, well, okay, M Megan, those sound like fighting words to me. Um, I mean, you've got Flower Pot Island, you've got mm -hmm. Manitoulin Island, which mm -hmm. is the biggest freshwater island in the world. Any other highlights on Lake Huron you want to tell us about? Well, I'll tell you about uh, Manitoulin Island, this sure. huge island in this freshwater sea, essentially. It has over 100 lakes on it. So it's lakes in a lake, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, I think when you think of uh, Lake Huron, you think of perch burgers, <laughs> you think of the incredible sunsets. There's, you know, it faces, well, from, from Canada, <clears throat> it faces west. And there's that was a shot. That was a shot. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, there's this beautiful uninterrupted skyline that is just, like, incredible for sunsets. It's got really everything that you're looking for. Hmm. We, we, we should also explain to people watching this or listening to this, uh, while we are doing this for educational purposes, we're also having an election. Uh, there's a poll out there, tvo.org slash Great Lakes. It goes until the 29th of September. So go on the website and you get to vote. This is an election. And my hunch is we're going to get better participation for this poll than we made for actually real elections. But I see you championing it, at the bit. Yeah, to get I, I want to go back to Lake Superior because Lake Superior reminds me of Tom Brady. And that in itself should, people shouldn't be voting for Lake Superior. Because if you listen to Lake Superior talk, it's all about me, 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 <laughs> and being the best, the best, the best. And he actually refers to himself as the gloat, Lake Superior. The gloat. The, oh, the, the gloat. greatest lake of all time. Yes. As opposed to the, uh, the goat. goat, which is Tom Brady. Greatest of all time. Greatest quarterback of all time. Greatest football player of all time. Yeah. I'm not a Brady fan. Well, I used to be a Brady fan. But I'm just saying right now, he reminds me of Tom Brady. He should not be getting any votes. Lake Superior should not get any votes. Well, uh, Lake Superior, I don't see, I was about to say, I don't see you doing too much gloating. But actually, I don't see you at all. Now, maybe you could explain why you're <laughs> being anonymous with us here tonight. Well, I, I like to keep the emphasis on the, on the lakes because it's not about me. It is about the lake. And I don't need my personal identity to, uh, to conflate that message. So, but I, I won't argue. I mean, Tom Brady has more championships than anybody else. I have more championships than anybody else. And, and he's married to a supermodel, I, we think. We think, although that may be tenuous at the moment. Uh, yes, I'm Serene, still looking for my way. Serene, are, <laughs> are, uh, Serene are, are, do you want to tackle Lake Superior in as much as he's making the case, but he's making it anonymously, whereas you are right there on camera, you know, being open and transparent for all the electorate? 
Well, I mean, I don't know how anonymous he's actually trying to be. I mean, I think that uh, Lake Superior is obviously trying to be the Banksy uh, of all Lake accounts here. Um, but also, I happen to find that his uh, shadow still takes up most of the best view of the lake. So there we have it. Uh, even in this screen divide here, I can barely see the horizon at all. So um, <laughs> I bet to differ again, taking out most of the credit and saying you are the voice of the lake. Um, and mm. as an indigenous person, what is the voice of the lake? How uh, profound a place to mantle to hold that I'd love to dive deeper in what that voice really entails. Man, it's on now. Okay, it's on. Uh, I should also mention here, all five of our guests here film videos vouching for the lakes that they are representing, and the agenda has begun to roll these videos out on our social media feeds. And we're going to look at some of the replies that we have received already, starting with this one. Uh, here's a Twitter user, Moose and Squirrel is the name, and it said, if the other lakes wanted to be as great of a lake as, say, Superior they could have changed their name to Lake Most Amazing or Lake Super Duper. Also, get more water if you want to play with the big lakes. I'm looking at you, Erie. <laughs> Tony, Dems fighting words, what oh, do you want to man. say? Well, okay, I just want to mention one thing, okay? Uh, point, uh, Peely Island, okay, um, is uh, Margaret Atwood. You know, our beloved Margaret Atwood mm -hmm. has a home there, um, and her and her partner, Graham Gibson, built a bird observatory there. And uh, Margaret Atwood has claimed that she has written most of her books, actually, on uh, uh, Peely Island. Um, so if that's not saying something about the, uh, you know, the value and the worth of, of, uh, of Lake Erie, especially to the arts, uh, which is a subject near and dear to my heart, um, then I don't know uh, what is. Um, Clearly inspirational yeah. to yeah. one of our great writers. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. that's, that's a fair point. Now let's do, okay, Megan, this one's going to be at you. This is Lake Superior versus Lake Huron. Um, okay, another tweet. It says here, this is from Matthew Cohen, it says, Superior may be biggest, but the greatest of all time for kayaking mm. is indisputably Huron. Are they right about that? Yeah, I'm going to get serious for a minute here. Okay. Uh, there is extraordinary kayaking on, in particular, Georgian Bay. Uh, w when you are along those rocky crags, when there's uh, around um, Cyprus where the water is so, it's like Caribbean blue. Mm -hmm. It's Gorgeous. I will say, uh oh, I'm I'm gonna get into. Uh, we had a little spat he's, in the in the green the, room earlier. He's giving you the stink eye here. I can see it. Yeah. There is some danger involved. Uh, there are some big storms. You got to know what you're doing. I've I've had a couple of moments where I've thought, okay, am I gonna make it back in time before this storm? So you got to be careful. You got to let people know what's going on. But what an extraordinary place to see kayak and see see the lake from the lake, and you're you know actually in it paddling around. Now, Superior, would you grant that Lake Huron's better for kayaking because your lake is simply too big and too angry most of the time to kayak in? All somebody has to do is Google some images of, of uh, pictured rocks kayaking. Another national lakeshore of mine and those 60 to 80 foot cliffs along pictured rocks are breathtaking. But yes, I am. I'm moody. And um, <laughs> that is... That is a positive and should not be taken as um, as a slight. Well, uh, Serene, you're not going to like this one, but we're going to bring this one up anyway. One more tweet here, some reaction to some of the videos we've put out there. Uh, our friends over at Great Lakes, uh, excuse me, Lake Ontario Waterkeeper chimed in with, and they're the, um, I guess, the longest running initiative of Canadian charity, Swim, Drink, Fish. And they said, Lake Ontario is greatest as it is made up of all the lake's waters. Not a bad point. But Twitter user Alan Gary Bunyan was not happy with that, and he replied, unfortunately, Lake Ontario is the toilet bowl of the entire Great Lakes system. Statistics indicate numerous health issues directly related to its position at the end of the chain. Okay, Serene, you're on. Ah, uh, it means that this lake actually requires the support of our nation more than any lake. Uh, we really need to protect it, and it means that it is proof that you can't actually isolate any of these lakes. We're talking tongue in cheek here about picking which one is the best, but all of these lakes are uh, intricately connected um, and rely on one another. Uh, and so Lake Ontario is the most vulnerable because they only have so many ways to clear their water uh, and they go right out to the Atlantic Ocean. So that St. Lawrence uh, waterway there, um, really, really important to protect and to watch and keep an eye on. So you're absolutely right. Uh, 
total world are something we should be thinking about anyway, because we're throwing our waste into water and flushing it down and thinking it's going away. So wonderful symbolic, uh, wonderful symbolism here about how uh, Canadians really are treating our water. So we need to rethink that. Now, Your Worship, you've got to have a soft spot for Lake Ontario. After all, the, the city you represent yeah. is on Lake Ontario. Yeah, I was going to say that tweet almost was written by Goldilocks. Like That was, that was a perfect <laughs> segue into that. Mm -hmm. But I, I do, I live in St. Catharines, which is on the shores of Lake Ontario. Neil Peart wrote Lakeside Park, famous rush, band player, mm -hmm. drummer, mm -hmm. and that was written right on the shores of Lake Ontario. So I do have a soft spot for Lake Ontario. But again, when we look <laughs> at Michigan and the role that Michigan plays, did you know that in Michigan there's like a Michigan Triangle? where when you go through on a boat or over by a plane, the navigation instruments get all kind of wonky. Seriously. It's, you could look it up. And I, I saw it on the internet, it's gotta be true. And so <laughs> when, you, when you look at that, it's, it's almost like it's an X-Files thing. That makes it cool. Like there's, there's a cool factor to Michigan that I don't really find with the other lakes. And again, Lake Superior, the best song that you have is from Gordon Lightfoot, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. That, that people died. That's what people think about when they think about Lake Superior, <laughs> at least when they listen to George, Gordon Lightfoot. I, I get that. Uh, okay, we should put that to Superior. I mean, the reality, he didn't call it Lake Superior. He called it the, the big lake they call Gitchigumi. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of tragedy in that lake once Oof. upon a time. Do you think people should take marks off Superior for that? Uh, lake Michigan is the deadliest great lake. So he can walk that comment back. Um, yes, there have been tragedies on all the Great Lakes, and water safety is is an, a dear issue that's important to me. I mourn the losses that I've taken um, and um, will preserve them for eternity. Nicely put. All right. We've all had a bit of fun here tonight, but uh, I think we want to leave this in, in a semi-serious way, in as much as, regardless of which one of you is the best, I think we all want to pitch in and make all of you even better. What's something that we could do that would improve and or take care of your particular lake better? Let's go in inverse order. Start us off, Tony. Yeah, I, I'd really like to mention the, um, the Lake Ontario Waterkeeper, um, who also does really great work on Lake Erie as well. Um, and they're part of the larger Waterkeeper Alliance. Um, we've had um, the, the opportunity to work with them uh, as a band and with our music for their uh, swim, drink, fish uh, program. And uh, I just think they're doing um, such fantastic work. And uh, uh, I think everyone should, should check them out. Good. Yeah. All right. Serene Fox, what can we do to help Lake Ontario? Well, thank you, Lake Erie, for lifting up the water keepers. I want to mention um, all of the generations of uh, Indigenous water walkers. I want to lift up Josephine Mandaman, who walked the shores of Lake Ontario to bring awareness to the health of our waters. And so, uh, and Lake Erie, I'm just going to shout you out because I'm waiting this whole time and really all the lakes. You may have Margaret Atwood, but did you know that I have Babe Ruth? So Babe Ruth hit off <laughs> that first home run at Hamlin Point Stadium. And this is one of the great ways that maybe we can protect Lake Ontario. That winning home run ball it's still in Lake Ontario. So maybe a quest to find it and also help clean the, the lake bottom at the attic. So. That is a fantastic point. And you know, with, with the New York Yankees, Aaron Judge chasing, ba well, he's tied Babe Ruth now for uh, most home runs in a single season at 60. The Babe hit 60 and now Judge has 60. And good for you for reminding us that his first professional home run was actually hit in Toronto, into Lake Ontario, and they never found the ball. So let's get on that, Serene. We got to go find that ball. That's a great point. Okay, who's next here? Uh, Superior. Uh, excuse me, Michigan. You're next here. What can we do to help you? You can call me Superior. That's fine. <laughs> in terms of what's happening in 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 Lake Michigan, it's the feeder coming in from the Mississippi River. So there's a place called Brandon Road, and the what we're focused on as the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative is making sure that Brandon Road is reconstructed to prevent the Asian carp from coming into. Mm -hmm. Michigan. If it comes into Michigan, it will it will change the ecology of all the Great Lakes. And so that is singularly one of the most important initiatives that the American government has to undertake. And I think the Canadian government needs to be aware of it, because if the Asian carp, the one that can fly, that can jump over, over boats. They're terrifying. We've seen the videos. If yeah. they can come in, and it's there's a lot of work being done, but if they break, if they breach Brandon Road, 
what you're going to see is a complete change over time of the ecology of the Great Lakes. So that's one thing that needs to be protected. Megan, what can we do for Lake Huron? I'm actually going to take it bigger to all the Great Lakes. As on Serene's point, they're connected. And what we do with one, we do with all. And also the land, because what we do on the land impacts the water. We know a lot. there's a lot of issues with runoff. If we can restore the shorelines, there's less runoff, more water's absorbed into the land, the, the health of the Great Lakes is better. So what anyone can do at home, organizations, whether it's water keepers, swim, drink, fish, local community groups, they need members, they need volunteers, they need donations. So find a few, sign up for their email lists, follow them on social media, see what they're doing, see if there are opportunities to raise some money for them, to go out and do some restoration with them. They need all of our help if we're going to protect these beautiful bodies of water. Great advice. Superior, you get the last word. Well, while I am the greatest lake of all time, together we are the greatest lakes of all time. And I think we'll all agree on that. Um, what I like to say is my tagline today is, is vote the gloat. Uh, but, but my message is that bears don't vote, eagles don't vote, fish don't vote um, for the problems and the environmental issues we see um, on our individual lakes and across the Great Lakes as a whole. Um, this is up to humans to fix. Um, um, we need to protect uh, the wildlife. We need to speak for the water, for the animals. Um, for the greater environment. Um, and it starts with the vote um, and it starts with involvement and, and speaking up and speaking up for the water. Um, but with that, I ask you to vote the GLOAT. <laughs> well, in fact, we can ask everybody to go vote as we do uh, both for real elections and for this election here, because your vote matters. So go to tvo.org forward slash Great Lakes. The website, once again, tvo.org slash Great Lakes. You can make your mark. The voting runs until September 29th. So you got another week to vote and you can have your say. And also tune in next week. We do a deeper dive on the Great Lakes as part of our ongoing partnership with the Council of the Great Lakes Region. Go vote, everybody. And thanks to the five of you for appearing on TVO tonight and so expertly making your pitches for your five Great Lakes. Thanks so much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.